Good morning from Sacred Space at Titania's Realm. Um, it's 9.50 a.m. on the 22nd of May, 2023. Um, I'm giggling because I just woke up and <laughs> I'm pretty ragged and I just ran a brush through my hair and as you can see my hair needs washing. So I look, I look terrible. But um, <coughs> I'm still not real well either. But it's a glorious day outside. But uh, um, I had I had just woke up from some really intense dreams, and I like to record my dreams. Normally I write them down, but I thought I'll try and put it on video because it's probably quicker and easier than writing them all down because there's just so much detail in them. So anyway, the funny part was I dreamt of my neighbours behind me. They live there, and um, they're Polish ancestry or the wife's. Um, part Russian ancestry, but the husband who shares my birthday, um, his father's Polish and he's Polish, born in Australia obviously, but yeah, Polish ancestry. So anyway, I dreamt about them again and I, I dreamt about them some months ago, which was a weird dream. So it's weird that I'm dreaming of them. But anyway, I have to go with my subconscious flow. So I dreamt, just woke up just woke up from the dream busting to pee so that's that's the only reason I'm awake anyway the dream goes like this so I'm I've driven somewhere in the car on a drive with Warren and his young young girls his you know, preteen girls I think the oldest one is 13 now so just in, entering into their teenage years and we go for a long drive somewhere, and we're driving alongside, it was quite weird, um, as we're driving along, like, I guess the highway or the street that meanders alongside a river, we observed this family, um, a father and a little kitty in the pram, like a, I don't know, two, three-year-old, and the wife beside them, and I think there were two other kids, and they were racing with the pram, like pushing the pram really fast. It was like it was on some sort of motorised scooter or something. And I looked out the window, and I turned to Warren, and I said, Warren, look at this family speeding along beside us. We're in a car, and they're racing like... I, I couldn't figure it out. I said... But that's really dangerous. He said, oh, oh, but it's clever how they're keeping pace with the car. This is the nonsensical part of the dream, of course. Dreams always have nonsense in them. And I said, anyway, the little girl, little um, little Evie looks out at 13 and she goes, no, Dad, I think that's really dangerous too. The baby could get thrown out of the pram and smash its head. It's like, Tanya's quite right. It's really dangerous. Anyway, so we're both looking a bit in awe and a bit in shock. And Warren goes, nah, they'll be right. They know what they're doing. Anyway, so I'm expecting a terrible accident. And I'm all anxious about this accident involving this family that is somehow racing and running really, really fast with their kitty in the pram. And the kid's like, yeah, you know, having a great time. And so I'm like, what? What is this nonsense? Anyway, I knew it was nonsense, but I was still worried about the child. Anyway, so we get to this place. Look, it the weird thing, the feel of it was that we were in New Zealand because the, the little town we went to felt like, it felt like it was a place I've been to <coughs> when I was younger. We are talking many years ago because I left New Zealand for the last time when I was 23. But anyway, it felt like somewhere like Levin or Otaki, just a small little country town. Anyway, so we go and we're sitting, we go to this restaurant, we're sitting there. Oh no, before the restaurant thing happens, sorry. So it segues again and Warren says, look, you need to invest some money in this thing I'm investing in. He said, I really recommend it. And I'm thinking, scam alert, scam alert. Why does he want me to invest in something? He knows I never invest in things, especially things I don't know about. And I very rarely put money into anything except my, my sterling silver jewellery because I don't trust. 
other people and investors. And I said, oh, so, oh, Warren, I don't trust in investments. Yeah, but today's the deadline, and if you don't get in, you miss out, and it's like paying $3, $3.07. $3.07, it was quite specific, it showed me the three oh seven. I said They said for every dollar you put, it's tripled. I went, oh, no, all right, well, I don't have much money. He goes, well, what have you got? We have to do it today, we have to do it today. And I'm like, why do we have to do it today? I don't want to do it today. Because <coughs> it shuts down, they're not allowing any new investments after today. Which sounded to me a bit scammy, actually. And um, But I just looked at her and I went, oh, all right, Warren. I said, well, look, I don't have much money. We'll have to go through my money box. So I open up my money box and I'm pulling out one cent coins, which is weird because no one has one cent coins anymore. I mean, I still have some in my coin collection, but in, not in general circulation, right? And I said, oh, come on, kids, help me count the money. So we'll put it piling them up into, you know, 10 cent, 20 cent and adding that up. And I piled it all up. And so we had lots of one cent coins and two cent coins. And um, we're piling it up. And then then there were 50 cent, Australian 50 cent coins, which was weird because in a dream I thought I was in New Zealand. So I'm pulling out, you know, the, the octagonal 50 cent coins. And we're piling those up. <clears throat> and then I start pulling out pieces of silver, sterling silver bullion that had been all cut in half and chunks. And I said, oh, well, that, that piece there is worth $40 and that piece was there is worth something. And Warren's going, oh, I don't think they'll take the bullion. And I went, bullion's real money, so it's worth more than the coins. And so he was a bit hesitant, but he didn't argue with me. So I'm throwing in chunks of bullion which was funny because in real life I would never do that you know I'd be funny about it too and I'd rather melt it down for jewelry but anyway so I'm looking at go I can melt this down for jewelry and I, ah chuck it in who cares I'm not going to use it so I'm doing this anyway it came to being worth about forty dollars which wasn't very much considering how much bullion I put in and anyway, look there you go that's all I've got and it's spare that there's forty dollars. That's my investment. And he goes, "Oh, thanks so much, Tanya. I'm, I promise you, you won't regret it. It's worth three times that already. You get a hundred and twenty dollars worth, and if you leave it there, it'll go up." And I was like, "Yes, I said things never go up for long. They always crash and burn. And I don't trust the economy. I never have, and I never have enough money anyway. So I don't believe in investing. Investing is like gambling to me." And um, you have to have excess money to do it, so I don't do it. And he's like, I oh, know, that's why I want to help you out. And it was quite, you know, he's looking at me quite heartfelt and genuine. I really want to help you out. I want you to have this opportunity, Tanya. It's the only time we can do it is today. So, all right, here's the money. Put it in. So he goes, right, I'll go straight away. I'll put it into the account, which I don't know how that works. Had to put it in, I suppose, in the bank account and transfer it over. And anyway, I'm quite trusting of him, you know. So he goes and he does this. Um, and and I'm satisfied and I'm sitting with his children and I'm waiting. And he comes scurrying back and he goes, yeah, yeah, it's done, everything's fine. And, oh, we've got it just in the nick of time because I'm so happy. I'm glad I've been able to help you out, Tanya. <coughs> Which I thought was lovely, you know. In real life, no one helps anyone out. We don't... don't Sometimes I give limes away to the neighbours when I've got excess limes, but, you know, um, and sometimes my neighbour Tim Sars been known to give me, like he gave me um, some beautiful uh, ginger, sweet ginger bulbs to grow ginger. And, you know, some very on rare occasions we will swap food over, but very it's so rare it's not really much of a help, you know what I mean. So um and um and I don't expect anything from from them and they don't expect anything from me. I just I occasionally say, hey, I've got plenty of limes and I'll share them, distribute them, things like that, you know. So anyway, so there's no reason in real life why they would suddenly want me to invest money in some freaking Ponzi scheme and because I wouldn't do it anyway in real life. I'd be like, no, nah, fuck off, you know, not doing it. But anywho, so here's the funny thing. So the dream segues, he's um he's invested the money, that $40 worth, and he's all happy about it. 
He said they accepted the bully, and I said, oh, God, you know. And um, <clears throat> he said, let's go and have a meal. So we go down, um, we go down somewhere to this restaurant, and we sit down at the restaurant, and there were all these chairs tucked in and long, long tables, like there was a celebration of some kind. And where I was sitting, we were missing, I thought we were missing a chair, so I went to grab a chair and bring a chair around. And the lady came around, she looked sort of Greek, Greek looking. She sort of looked at me, I went, oh, just there was no chair. Then she goes, yes, there are chairs, don't worry. So I put the chair back, I felt a bit stupid, you know. Anyway, so we sit down at the table, Warren and Tash and the kids and I, and I'm really excited just to be out having a meal with them, you know. So I don't get out much, literally, even in real life. So I'm sitting there and um, I look down at the table and there's lots of Greek, Greek Mediterranean people sitting around us and they're all very happy and excited. I said, oh, what's the occasion? They said, oh, it's our son's birthday. Um... He's turned 13 or something like that. And I said, oh, how lovely. And um, we said, we're just coming on a day trip and we thought we'd have a meal. And they said, oh, yeah, yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. So they hand us a handmade piece of paper. It actually looked like handmade paper that I actually have in real life at home that I've handmade. Um, so uh, I looked down at it and there's nothing written on it. And they said, this is the menu... They said, don't worry, they said, it'll look like there's nothing on it, but there is, this is the menu. So I'm thinking it's a trick, right? So I said, oh, so I turned to the lady at the table next to me. I said, oh, is it done with invisible ink? She goes, oh, I don't think so. And I went, well, I can't read any writing. Where's the writing? It must be invisible ink. So I pour water all over the paper and everyone's like, what are you doing? And I went, what's invisible ink? If you put water on the lemon juice, it'll show up and then we can read the menu. And they went, no, no, I don't think you meant to do that. So I'm sitting there with a soggy piece of handmade paper. It was all rough texture. Literally looks like paper I have actually made and it's in my boxes. And it's all soddy. And then they're like, no, that's not the menu. And I thought, well, why'd you give me a blank piece of paper? I thought it was um, something where you had to, like, for fun, had to bring up, expose the writing. And they said, no, no, it wasn't that. And I went, what was it? I went, oh, we don't know. Anyway, and then <clears throat> the person next to me yells out, Opa, Cypris. Cyprus, I said. I went, yeah, we're from Cyprus. I said, oh, I thought you were from Greece. And they said, no, we're from Cyprus, but it's right next door. And I went, oh, yeah, yeah, culture's very similar. Mm. And they were, like, laughing at me. Anyway, so they sit there, they bring out all this food. And then I start talking to somebody. And I said, oh, you know, my neighbour's Polish, you know, but you can't really tell. And they said, what do you mean you can't really tell? I said, well, he doesn't have the flat Slavic head like I have. I've got the flat head. And then the, <laughs> and the dream, like, Warren's laughing at me. I said, when you met his father, his father has got the flat Slavic head. He looks really Polish. <laughs> they were laughing at me. And I said, it's true, it's true. <coughs> and then I turned to this older man. He goes, oh, are you single? And I'm like, yeah, I am, but I'm not interested. He goes, why aren't you interested? Oh, I'm just not interested. He goes, but you're single. Do you know how hard it is to find a nice single woman these days? I went, I'm sure it's really hard, especially trying to find one that's interested. And um, he's like laughing at me. And he said, I'm from Cyprus. And I went, oh, yeah, that's cool. I said, we've got Polish ancestry. And he said something like, looks at Warren, he says, I thought you would look French. And then really randomly, I I said out loud in the dream, I said, oh, yes, well, I said, my concentra concentration surviving stepfather tells me that the French are, are lovers and not fighters. He goes, oh, what do you mean? And I went, well, it's a really horrible thing to say because it, 
it's true, it's, but it's really horrible. I said, the French were the first to die in the concentration camp, middle Baldora. I said, because they just didn't have the physical strength or the stamina or the stoicism or I don't know what they didn't have, but they killed over first. And Case used to always tell me the French, the French were a weak nation and, and they, they fell, they literally fell down dead first before everyone else. I said to him, who were next? He said, the Italians. And I went, well, who were the strongest? He said, oh, you know, anyone from the, the Eastern Bloc nations, really. And I thought they probably could tolerate the bitter cold, you know. So, because um, it was bitterly cold and there was no heating and there was nothing. They were in a tunnel, you know, it was horrendous. So, but I'm looking at this thinking, why am I espousing his views, which are his experiential views, right? But they come across as sounding quite racist and vile, actually. Um, but <coughs> <coughs> why am I saying this out loud to people from Cyprus at a nice restaurant where we're having a lovely day? I thought, well, I do that sometimes. I do come out with inappropriate things. So I'm look, and the, the man's just looking at me and went, ah, the French are lovers, not fighters. <laughs> and he's laughing. And I went, no, it wasn't funny. They all dropped dead like flies. And he went, yeah, 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 yeah. He goes, but it's just so funny how he put it. And I went, yeah, I guess that was kind of funny. If you could look at it that way. Anyway, and then I woke up. I woke up. So I've been haunted in the dream by my dead stepfather, who I really, you know, don't like much. And, um, you know, my my neighbours, I'm dreaming of my neighbours again, about them being Polish and wanting me to invest money, which is bizarre. They would never ask me to do such a thing. Never in a million years. So it's, it was a very strange dream. So, but these are the key points in the dream. Poland, Cyprus, Poland, Cyprus, the fact that Fr the Frenchmen are romantics and, you know, uh, are not great warriors, and um, the blank piece of paper that I'm trying to get information on by lighting up with um, water, uh, and, uh, yeah, the uh, the stressing about some family running on the road dangerously and the um wanting me to invest money those are the the themes of the of the dream so none of it makes sense it's all nonsensical but you never know you might hear about something happening in cyprus to do with an unknown document you never know might come true that part but anyway Good morning from Sacred Space. I've defragmented my crazy dying sleep apnea dream. And I'm alive and I'm awake and <coughs> I've got to I've got to um carry on with my my beautiful boulder opal that I worked on yesterday afternoon and evening from two to seven. Can you see it? Oh. I don't know if you can see it. There. I worked on it. So um, i got to finish putting the prongs on that and setting it. And Yeah. I don't like the large bale I've made, but I, I can't make it smaller because it's woven, Viking woven braided silver, so I'll just leave it chunky like that, I think. Um <coughs> And I'll solder this on so I can turn it. It'll look like that. I was going to put another jump ring on, but I think I'll just solder it straight on like that. Otherwise, it'll get too finickety, finickety, finaggity. And I'll, yeah, I'm looking forward to a happy day, even though I'm not feeling terribly well. Um, not coughing overly much, but the lungs are a bit wheezy still. And uh, yes, we'll just say good morning to Charlie. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning, little baby girl.
You come out and see Mama. Say hello from Sacred Space. Say hello from Sacred Space at Titania's Realm. Say hello to the people. Morn oh, morning kisses from the Charlie. All right, goodbye from us. Have a beautiful, blessed day, people. And uh, I'll be, no doubt, communicating with you soon. Take good care. Bye for now.